If you're a mid to senior level software engineer, I need to tell you something that most people probably won't say out loud. You are wasting your potential. Not because you're not smart, not because you're not skilled, but because you're following a career path that was built for a world that simply doesn't exist anymore. A world where climbing the corporate ladder would actually guarantee you financial freedom after a certain amount of time. But that world, it's simply gone now. And if that sentence stings even just a little, then good. It means that you're actually awake. And in this video, I'm going to break down exactly why so many software engineers, even the ones doing everything quote unquote right, quietly feel like something is still off. And why that feeling isn't necessarily a bug, but rather a feature. It's a signal, one that you've actually been trained to ignore. Because let's be honest with ourselves, most software engineers aren't actually encouraged to think for themselves. We're trained to optimize code, not necessarily our lives, to debug systems, not necessarily our careers, to follow the sprint, the backlog, the jury ticket, but never our gut. And when our gut tells us that something's wrong, we simply rationalize it. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Oh, it's probably just a burnout. Oh, it'll probably get better after this next promotion. This is just how the industry operates. This is just how everything works. But deep down at every single one of these instances, you know, you're not just tired. You are misaligned. You got into tech because you liked building things, solving real problems, learning fast, and you wanted leverage to create something once and have it help thousands of others. Now, I mean, you're in meetings all day, every single day. You're fixing bugs that somebody else created way before you. You're maintaining legacy systems that feel like duct tape spaghetti code. And at the end of the day, you're solving fake problems, things that don't really quite matter in the grand scheme of things for people who don't really even care. Sure, you're good at your job, but your work doesn't quite feel like yours. And here's the kicker. The better you get at it, the more trapped you feel because the system wasn't designed to help you grow. It was actually designed to make you predictable. So let me explain. I want you to imagine your career as a graph. X axis is time and then Y axis is growth. In the very beginning, your growth is almost vertical. You're learning constantly. Everything to you is new. But over time, that curve flattens. Not because you've stopped growing, but rather because the system around you can't keep up. You're learning faster than your job can actually evolve. And this is true for most software engineers. So your potential pretty much sits dormant. Like a rocket ship that's strapped to a parking brake and can't move from its spot. And here's actually the part that nobody actually tells you. If you get too good at your job, for example, if you can automate things well, or you solve problems too fast, you become a threat to budgets, to middle managers, to the status quo in general, and you get what's called the golden handcuffs. That's why some of the best engineers that I know personally are also some of the most frustrated ones, because the better they get, the smaller their box becomes, and eventually they stop growing altogether. And once again, not because they're lazy, not because they're not smart, but rather because they're stuck in a system that wasn't built for people like them. So what do most people actually do? Well, they numb out. They let the decades go by. Five years, 10 years, 15 years. They buy the gadgets that they need to buy. They take vacations. They chase these promotions. They try to make a broken system feel bearable. But deep down, they know the years are passing. They were always meant for more. But for you, this is where the story can actually change. Because what if... Just what if, instead of numbing that very same signal, you decided to trust your gut and followed it? What if misalignment isn't necessarily a problem to fix, but a compass to follow? I want to introduce you to John. So John is an AI engineer from Silicon Valley, and he has over 10 years of experience. He's a quiet guy, nothing on Twitter, no personal branding, but he's insanely good at AI automation. And at work, he built a system that reduced internal reporting time by over 85%. And John saved his company hundreds of hours a month, and I don't even know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars. And they gave him a nice job 
in a Slack thread. And don't get me wrong, he was making decent money for a software engineer, more than enough, I mean, a few six figures, let's say. But when he applied to work with us, I remember one thing specifically, and it was that he stopped growing. In fact, he said for the past 10 years, he hadn't really seen any growth. The first five years, he's seen more growth than in the past 10 years. Fast forward to now, three months later, he's now doing over $50,000 a month. Starting from three months ago, he was making pretty much zero. Not necessarily no crazy startup, no crazy investors, no followers, didn't have a personal brand. All he did was simply use leverage, right? But what exactly changed? I mean, his skill set didn't change, just the direction that his skill set was aimed at. And he's not alone. There's plenty of other folks, just like John, Marco, Dom, and I can go on and name so many other people. But at the end of the day, the most important takeaway is that it's very much possible for pretty much any software engineer that is watching this video currently to be able to do exactly what they did. Because once again, it's not necessarily that you have to learn new skills, but rather you have to aim your current skill set at higher leverage opportunities. And none of these people quit their job overnight. None of them built the next Facebook, the next Google, the next tech unicorn. Instead, all they did was stop waiting and they started building. Okay, now that's good and all, but how do you actually go about doing it? Let me walk you through the roadmap. So step number one, the first thing you need to do is pick a skill that you are already being paid for. And I want you to think beyond your title, not automation, not infrastructure, not front end, not back end, not process optimization, not data cleanup, further than that. What do people say that you're extremely good at or that you're fast at? That's going to be your clue as to what your actual strength is. Step number two, identify who actually has that problem. And don't look into big tech. I want you to think much smaller. Local businesses, agencies, solo operators. And ask yourself, who loses time or money because they don't have my specific skill? Step number three, I want you to build a fixed price done for you DFY solution. Don't sell time, simply sell outcomes. Instead of $50 an hour for backend help, offer weekly reporting automation in seven days flat fee. And step number four, talk to just 10 people, literally. DM them, email them, send a Loom outreach, doesn't really matter, meet them in person. 10 business people who might need this exact solution. And remember, you're not necessarily selling. All you're doing is listening. Just ask them, what's your biggest bottleneck right now? Then say, I think I can help. Step number five, close one person, deliver, improve, and repeat. You don't need a crazy landing page. You don't even need a logo. All you need is really one win because from there on, everything else will compound. Now, you might be thinking, I'm not a salesperson. This isn't for me. Good. You don't need to be because you're not convincing anyone. Always remember, all you're doing is relieving pain. And when you do that, people don't actually need persuasion. They need a payment link. Now, another objection you might think of is, okay, what if I fail? And here's the truth. You're pretty much already failing if you're not growing. And... What's the worst that can happen? Trying and failing isn't going to be failure. Staying stuck actually is. And worst, absolute worst case, you go back to your job. And best case, you unlock the life that you've always wanted to live. So worst case, you go back to essentially just doing what you're doing now. Best case, your life completely changes. More time, more ownership, more joy, more leverage. And if you're still worried that you don't have time, all you have to do is just start with one hour a day. Turn off Netflix block distractions, put your phone away and just focus. Build for 30 days, see what happens. Once again, you don't need to quit your job. You don't need to have a million followers. All you need is that same signal that every single person before you got. That one client, that one win, because that's actually how it all starts. And if this feels scary, then good. That just means it actually matters to you. If this feels exciting, that's even better. That means you're ready and you can actually see a path for you to get there. So here's your permission. You don't need to ask your manager. You don't need to ask your boss. You don't need to ask your family. You don't need to ask your friends. You don't need to wait for the next promotion. You don't need another certification. You are allowed to actually bet on yourself. You're allowed to use your skills for you. And you are allowed to want more. More ownership. More money. 
more growth, more freedom, more meaning in what you do. Remember, you're not necessarily underpaid, you are under leverage. So that's the key thing that you have to change. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and have a good one.